Um, let me read to you our text for this morning, Philippians 2, 19 to 30. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For, for I have no one like, like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interest, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that surely I myself will come also. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill near to death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. We, can, we now come to the end of chapter 2 of Philippians. And let us see how, how we arrive here. Philippians is about uh, the joy of serving, the joy in the Lord, the joy in the gospel. We know in chapter 1 that Paul wrote this epistle to the Philippians who were very dear to his heart. He prayed for them that their love will abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment and so on and so forth. Giving his example that his life being devoted to the Lord, that he said, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And what happened to me, I'm in prison, but don't worry about me, it furthered the gospel. And he expressed also his longing that I want to go and minister to you. But whether... I will be present or be absent, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel, striving together in the faith of the gospel, and warning them that there will be adversaries, and warning them that it is not only for us to receive the, the salvation, but also, also to suffer in His name. The key in chapter 2, in, as He said all these challenges, is to be united. That you'll be one, fulfill you my joy, that you'll be like-minded. And he said that our example is the Lord Jesus Christ, being humble. And we should have an attitude just like the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that example of the Lord Jesus Christ, he challenged the church at Philippi. Wherefore, as you have always obeyed, not only, only in my absence, but in presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And he mentioned that our status or our position in the Lord is that we are lights in this world. That was what we, we have studied last week. That as lights in the world, we must, we must um, work out our own salvation. We must work it out. It means that we are going to do all things without grumbling and disputing. And we're going to advance the gospel, hold fast the word of life. That was the joy of Paul. He said that I may not be ashamed during the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labor in vain. Now, <clears throat> he would like to minister personally to the church of Philippi. But there was no chance, there was no opportunity for him because he was imprisoned. But it's possible for him to minister to the church of Philippi because he has to individuals who two disciples shall we say in the person of Timothy or Timothy and Epaphroditus who were like-minded who were of the same heartbeat as Paul they were servants whom Paul had the trust and the confidence to minister to Philippi they are the subject of our uh, message today the life of Timothy and Epaphroditus as servants par excellence. The word par excellence means they are outstanding. It means that they will stand out, really, that they are the best among the best. Serving 
I believe, is the key that Christians can have the real joy. Somebody said, in the person of Booker T. Washington, Booker T. Washington, I believe, was one of the black Americans who obtained a higher education. He was once a slave who, I believe he was a Christian. And he said this statement, who, those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. I'm interested in this statement of Booker T. Washington because the opposite is true in the world today. What the world values today is that if people are serving me the most, it means that I'm the happiest, isn't it? I want to be the center of the world. And I believe that is the culture that is prevalent or very prominent in our times. That's why the selfie culture is very prevalent, right? We want to be the center of every picture, selfie. I mean, the world wants... Everyone in this world wants to be the center in this world. But for, for this guy, he said, you want to be the happiest? You have to, to do the most for others. I think another person, Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback uh, Church in California, he said, Jesus, however, measured great, greatness in terms of service, not status. God determines your greatness by how many people you, say you serve, not how many people serve you. And I believe that as Christians, as believers, as called out by the Lord to shine into this world, we can achieve only real joy if we know this, this heartbeat of service. If we know and experience that the heartbeat just like of Paul and the, just like the, the Lord Jesus Christ. That they had a heart really to serve and to give their lives towards others. It's not easy really to serve. Why? Because by nature we are selfish. It's not natural for us to serve. Rather, we want people to serve us. But because of the gospel, because of what Jesus did to us, because of the grace of God, He will be able to, or He is going to empower us that we will be willing and we will be joyful in serving others. It's only when the gospel is in you, if you believe the gospel and you experience the gospel. If you're here this morning and you have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there will be a little bit of difficulty to serve. Because it's only when you have Christ in your heart, if you have the gospel, that you will learn how to serve others, to sacrifice for others. Because we always look at people sometimes as interruptions. Now, people should not be an interruption. People are blessings. People may cause us a little discomfort, inconvenience, because people are always people, they are always imperfect. But this should not be an interruption for us, we are, because we are called to serve people. The way we serve people may reflect also of the, the the way how we show our love to, to the Lord. We love the Lord, love the people, because the people is the, 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 the our service to the people, our love to the people is, is uh, there are evidences that we really love the Lord. How can you love God whom you do not see? Even you cannot love God um, people whom you cannot see. People have always need. They have always need, as we have always need. And God meant for us to shine as lights in the world in order to meet these needs as channel of God's blessings to others. There are always people who are in need if we are just sensitive. I come across to this story of Casey Fisher. She met a homeless man named Chris in a Dunkin' Donut shop or restaurant. Uh, Fisher was a student. She went into this Duncan uh, shop in order to buy coffee. But there was this homeless guy who was, you know, looking for some coins, you know, to buy something. 
And she went to him and talked to him, but this guy didn't bother. He does not want anybody to talk to him. But this lady, Casey Fisher, was insistent. So this guy opened up. And she offered to buy him, him uh, a coffee and, you know, to, a food. And they talked. And this guy opened and said, I didn't know my father, and my mother died of cancer. And all I desired in my life was to make my mother happy. And people called me, uh, people called, I mean, um, look at me, and they're not happy with me. And, and uh, she, she just opened up. But Casey Fisher, remember that she has a class, so she said, I cannot stay long, so I have to go. But this guy said, wait a minute. And he wrote in this tissue paper something. And she left. This tissue paper was in her, in her hands. And when she opened it, he said, today I decided to end my life. But because of what you have done, I will not continue doing it. Thank you, beautiful person. And he said, she said on her blog that she didn't know why she, why she felt that she had to talk to this person. And I looked into the Facebook uh, account of this lady, Casey Fisher. There, wasn't even, there was not even a hint that she was a Christian. She was just led to do something for somebody who was in need. And because of that, this homeless man named Chris did not commit suicide or did not end his life. Even in, in, in our little own corner, sometimes we are so, not so sensitive that maybe people are just lonely. They just want to, somebody to listen to them. They just want somebody to pat on their shoulder. Let us be people who are very sensitive to the needs of others. And let it be that we will draw our happiness in helping others because, as Booker T. Washington said, those who are the happiest are those who can do the most for others. And we can find this in these two guys this morning, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Paul was always desirous to minister personally to the church at Philippi. When he said, yeah, I am ready to be offered or to be poured as like a drink offering for the service and the sacrifice of your faith. I do joy and rejoice with you all, in verse 18 and 19. He trusted that I can come to you shortly, but there's no way for him to minister to these people. But thank God that he can do it through others. Thank God that he has Timothy and Epaphroditus who were of the same heartbeat and 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 uh, compassion and the same commitment that he can send. They were sent by Paul to Philippi to minister to the church at Philippi. They were the best of the best that Paul can think of in terms of service. So this morning, let us, let us uh, focus on these two guys who were a blessing. And let it be that we will be able to um, to draw applications also in our lives. How can we be a blessing, especially in our attitude of being a servant? This German pastor, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, said that we must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. God will be constantly crossing our paths and canceling our plans by sending us people with claims and petitions. Look at people not as interruptions, but they are just but precious jewels and souls that God wants us to minister in our lives. I hope that we will grow in our love in serving others. There are two <clears throat> qualities that stand out in these two guys. For Timothy, he, it was his single-heartedness. And for Epaphroditus, it was his sacrificial life. Let's talk first on Timothy. Timothy, according to Paul, in verse 20, he said, For I have no one like-minded or like him who will genuinely concern for your welfare. In our King James Version, Paul said, For I have no one like-minded. 
And in the original, it means the same soul, the same heartbeat. Paul and Timothy has the same care, concern, and compassion to the church at Philippi or to others. Um, unity is not only that we are doing the same thing, that's not unity. It's not only that we are attending the same church, attending the same service, that's not unity. Not even having the same interest, what we want, the hobbies we have. But it's the same passion and the same heartbeat inside. This was the, the, the heartbeat of, of Paul, and that was also the heartbeat of Timothy. Why? Why is it that that was his heartbeat of serving others? <clears throat> it's because in verse 21, Paul said, For all seek their own interests. Did Paul slight the other Christians at Rome? Did Paul question their commitment and their concern and their love to others? We don't know. But I don't believe that Paul had the intention of putting down the others and exalting Timothy here. There are reasons, folks, why people are not available. There are reasons, folks, why people are not ready to serve. It was not meant for, for uh, Timothy to be favored by Paul because he was very different. He was very special to Paul in a sense that he was compared with others. No. But at this very moment, it was Timothy who was the most available to serve the Lord that he can send to Philippi. As it is said, availability is the best ability. He was there serving with him. And he said, this guy, Timothy, I know. His heart is for the Lord Jesus Christ. All seek their own, their own interest. But Timothy seek the interest only of Jesus. I can see that the challenges or one of the, shall I say, uh, difficult challenges that we have as a Christian today is that we want to serve the Lord and at the same time, we want also to pursue on something else. We are not single-hearted on Christ alone. We want to serve God and mammon. We want to serve God, yes. There's no question for me to serve God. But can I still do this? Can I still have my time on this and pursue this in my life? There's no such thing as serving God and mammon. You cannot do that because if only you are, you are going to serve God, serve God. Don't use or don't equate serving things and serving the things of the world just like you are serving God. One must be subservient to the other. Must, must, one must be under to this important goal in my life. So, Timothy has the resolve in his heart that for me, my heart is only for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul had seen it. All seek their own, in their own interest. That's why he was very special. He was very outstanding as a, as a servant. Because his heart or his heartbeat is only for the Lord Jesus Christ. Are our heartbeats, are my heartbeat for the Lord Jesus Christ alone? That we have no other valuable and most important thing in this world or we have no other in our hearts that we value the most except that the Lord Jesus Christ, my most important possession, value, treasure, my relationship with Him and to serve Him is the most important thing in my life. And I cannot sacrifice that for others. That's why if we look at serving us, I can serve God 50% and I can serve also this world 50%, we will be in trouble in serving the Lord because God wants us to be single-hearted, just like Timothy. There was no question about his commitment. And maybe the, Philipp the church at Philippi um, questioned a little bit about him because he was very young. But Paul has to argue that 
He has proven His word, but you know the proof of Him. That as a son with a father, He has served with me in the gospel. We'll come to that later. Why is it that we are going to value Jesus? Why is it that we are going to value God? We must be single-hearted in serving the Lord. Let's learn from what the psalmist said, said in Psalm 73, verse 25 and 26. <clears throat> the psalmist Asaph, the background of this psalm is that he sold the wickedness of the ungodly, and they prospered materially, they prospered about their business, their lives, while he saw the righteous that they are struggling with life. And he was envious. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, I almost fell. I almost stumbled, he said. Because they are not as other men suffering. They have always the money. They have always what they want to, to do in their life. It is as if that they were so blessed and they are ungodly. But he said there that until I went into the sanctuary of God, I understood their end. And his conclusion in this chapter, in this particular psalm is that I valued God as the most important possession in my life. Whom have I in heaven but you, God? And there's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. There was no question in the heart of Asaph that whether here or there, God is his number one. Paul said also in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 to 4, he encouraged the church at Colossae, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. The key that they are going to set their hearts on God alone, to serve God and to put their focus on God alone, is that you have died in Christ. You are separated from the world already. You have died with the world already. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. And then the promise in verse 4, When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Now, Paul reminded us here that our perspective is not here. God must be our focus because we are not looking at the things in this world, but we are looking beyond this world. And Paul even said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, while we, not look, while we, we don't look at the things that are seen, because the things that are seen are temporal, but we look at the things that are not seen, for these are the eternal things. Our perspective will, up, will affect the way we commit ourselves in serving the Lord. If you are looking only in this world, you will not be like Timothy. You will not be like Paul. You will not be driven to commit your life to, to serve the Lord alone, to be single-hearted for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. But we should use things in this world, not love things in this world. It's different, huh? Iba yung mahalin mo yung mga bagay dito sa mundo at iba yung sabi natin na gamitin ko ang mga bagay sa mundo to serve God. Don't love the things in this world as you love also God because these two are not compatible. These are, they are like oil and water. They are just opposite. You cannot put your heart to God and say, I also love the things in this world. You must use the things in this world to express your love to the Lord. It means that one is disposable and dispensable. You can just get rid of this if the Lord wants to get this to me. It doesn't matter. It, because my most important possession and treasure in life is Jesus and God alone. Kung ganito lang itong ating commitment, mga kapatid, it's not easy, for, uh, you know, it's not hard for us to decide kung resolve sa ating puso ito. Talking about relationships, talking about work, talking about how we are going to relate in this world. If you have resolved in your heart that God is my most important possession in life. Anything that will threaten my relationship with God, anything that will threaten my devotion and my passion for God, walang bahagi yun sa buhay. I will not entertain it in my life. But frankly, in my life, in our lives, is not easy. It's not easy. Why? Because 
this flesh, the glitters of the world, ang tukso ng mundo is so strong for us to be drawn away. That's why, that's why, itong bagay na to, kailangan natin ng biyaya ng Panginoon. We need the grace of God. We need the power of God. Only when we have the grace of God, only when we are going to hang on unto the, 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 the truth and the grace of God that we will be able to commit like Timothy. That we will stand out and say everybody will go on to the interest in the world or to the things of this world, but Timothy is the guy who pursues the things of God. When we have the interest of Christ as our top priority, then caring others will be genuine. Look at what Paul said here. For I have no man like-minded who will not truly care for your state, or in our ESV, who will genuinely care for your state. There are people who care, but are they genuine? The key there is that Timothy is genuine in his care to the church at Philippi. The key was that, or the, the reason was that, he was true to God. He was true to, his, to, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, kung, kung totoo sa, aking puso, sa ating puso na talagang mahal natin ang Panginoon, nakikita ito sa pagtrato natin sa ibang tao. Why is it that people are not genuine in their treatment, in the way they deal with others? It's because maybe there, are, there is also something wrong in their relationship with the Lord. There is something wrong in their love for God. <clears throat> Verse 22, which was the reason why Paul can commend Timothy to the church at Philippi. So he said, Timothy maybe this time was very young. We don't know what was his age during his time, but he was much younger. And maybe the church at Philippi questioned him. He, he is so young. But Paul said, you know Timothy, you know the proof of his life. He served with me as a son with a father in the gospel. You know the proven worth of Timothy. The word proven or proof in our King James means proven by trials. Tested by difficulties. Ibig sabihin na si Timothy had a track record. He served with me in the gospel. An anak ko siya. I mean, in fact, that was what Paul uh, claimed to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 2 and 2 Timothy 1 and 2. Timothy is his son in the faith. Paul, as many believe, was a single person. Maybe he did not marry. And even some said, maybe he got married, but his wife divorced him because he became a Christian. Because according to some, you cannot be a member of Sanhedrin if you are not, get, if you are not married, not a married person. But anyway, that's not so important. But he's, he looked at Timothy as his son in the faith. In other words, Timothy cho chose to be a son to Paul. He committed himself to be a son to Paul. They met each other in Acts chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Paul came to also to Derby and to Lestra. This was the place where Timothy had grown up. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman, woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lestra and Iconium. And the next verses will tell us that Timoth, uh, Paul in, um, chose Timothy and circumcised him because of the Jews. So Timothy was already a believer, but a young believer. He was a young person here. And he was well spoken of by the brothers. Why did Paul choose Timothy to be his assistant, to be his disciple? Because he was well spoken of by the brothers. Nakita ni Pablo ang potential ni Timothy. Bata pa si Timothy, pero nagpakita na siya na maganda yung reputasyon niya, maganda yung integridad niya. He was well spoken of among the believers. He grew up with a not so an ideal home because tatay niya Greek, maybe not a Christian, but his mother and grandmother were Christians, Eunice and Lois. You can see uh, their names in 2 Timothy chapter 1. 
And he became a Christian when he was very young because this, grand, this mother and grandmother brought him the Lord, to the Lord. He sh they shared to him the gospel when he was very young. There is a principle that I would like us to remember here that whenever we are going to put a person into a responsibility and assign him into a responsibility, we are not going to give him a responsibility in order to make him faithful, but give him a responsibility because he was proven faithful. Hindi natin bigyan ang assignment ng isang bagay para maging faithful. You see, yun ang pagkakamali natin minsan. When I was in high school, we had some organization like that. Uh, class organization. Magpili tayo kung sino mga officers, right? I remember one time when we had our high school class organization. I don't remember, with, was it third year or fourth year? Na may isang absinero, sabi ng isa, ay, inuminate natin si absinero para ma, hindi na mag-absent. Inuminate natin para mag-attend ng palagi sa ating meeting, para maging faithful. And we thought that was the best decision in order to encourage him to be always on the meeting. Nakaproblema kami. Kasi hindi nag ng meeting. The more na hindi nag ng meeting. You see, you are not going to put somebody into a responsibility in order to make him faithful, but the opposite. You put him into this responsibility because you have proven him faithful. Timothy was like that. He has proven his worth. He was a son to me. We served together in the gospel. Listen, hindi, hindi makakita tayo ng katulad ni Timothy kung walang relationships like this. Discipleship is very important. Paul had reaped the, the, the fruit of his labor in mentoring this this young guy, Timothy, after over the years of mentoring, spending their lives together, traveling together, Timothy saw Paul's life. Timothy saw how Paul committed his, in his life to the Lord, how he responded to the problems of life, and that was the lessons and the learning experience of Timothy. We learn by what we saw in others, especially in a son-father relationship. Timothy grew and developed a heartbeat like Paul. Single heartbeat. Single-hearted for the Lord. That's why he stood out as one of the best of the servants that Paul can ever think. Now let's go to Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus' life is sacrificial. Yet I suppose to send unto you Epaphroditus, that's what he said also, a brother, a companion in labor. Epaphroditus nearly uh, died because of, of, um, of his service to, Timoth uh, to, to Paul. In verse 30, Paul said, Epaphroditus nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Epaphroditus, uh, the name itself comes from Aphrodite, the goddess of love in the Greek mythology. It is equivalent to Venus. It was not a Christian name. Um, <clears throat> he became a Christian. He was a pure Gentile. It means that he is not of Jewish blood. Now, we don't know much about Epaphroditus, but he came from Philippi. He was the messenger from Philippi who brought the, the, the support to, to Paul in Rome because Paul was in prison and the Philippi helped him there. But he almost died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. He sacrificed his life. He was willing to risk his life. It's interesting because the word risk here, it means to gamble. It means that he is putting his life in danger. He is, he is willing to go where there is no certainty whether he will be alive or not. He has just risked his life for the work of Christ. He is an example of risking his life because the ministry of God, the work of Christ is worth dying for. 
Paul said that unless a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it will remain by itself. But if it dies, it will bear much fruit. That's the way how we grow in life, how we grow in our service to the Lord. We must be like Epaphroditus. We must be willing to sacrifice. When I went into the ministry, I resigned from my job. I work as a working student in Don Baptist Seminary. I have to scrub the floor during the evenings and study there. Study while scrubbing the floor. And I have to support myself. And there, was, there were, there were uh, a few of my colleagues who did not understand my decision. And somebody said, is it worth the sacrifice that you're going to resign from this job in order to go into the mission, or to go into the full-time service? He was not a Christian, but he was very close to me, and I told him, if I, re- if ga- if I gave you the reason, you cannot understand. You cannot see what I have seen, but someday you will understand. To sacrifice maybe is very... Um, Shall I say, it's too much for others. But for us who understand, for us who understand that Christ had sacrificed so much for me, that there is no sacrifice that can outdo or that can compare to what He did to me, it will be a different picture, right? If God sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for me, Will it be too much for me also to sacrifice my life for Him? Will there be any risks too much that I cannot give my life to the Lord? I talked with somebody the other day. We talk about people who got sick. We, 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 um, we are so sad that there are people who are, who are um, sick because... Um, they don't watch about their health, you know, they, their, their lifestyle is not really good. <clears throat> but there are people who are exercising well, they eat the right kind of food, they are watchful of their health, yet they got sick. Why? Nobody has the answer. But this has come to my mind that mangyari pala ang mangyari kung kagustuhan ng Panginoon. Hindi tayo magpili. Whether you are watchful of your health, you are watchful uh, of your diet, you exercise a lot in order to get, na, na, get that's good, hindi ka magkasakit because you are watchful. Pero maari din na magka-cancer ka, di ba? Nigugulat din tayo na may mga tao na they are not so watchful of their diet, they, they don't care, but they are still alive. Wala silang cancer. It, is one better than the others? Ito, nag, nagbabantay sa kanyang health, pero nagkasakit. Ito, hindi. That, that, these, these incidences or these things happening just remind us that life is short. It can happen to me, it can happen to you. But, this has come to my mind. Na kung mangyari yun, I hope that when we look back, hindi tayo mag-regret ba? Lord, 40 years old pa ako, nagkasakit ako. I want to serve you more. I want to I want na magamit niyo ako pero nakasakit na ako. Hindi tayo dapat magregret na I cannot do more for God during the time that it happened to us. But we should be thankful that for the first 40 years in our life we did not waste wasted. We did not waste our time. We didn't waste our lives for the for something na hindi pa hindi pa maka for, for, for God and for eternity. I hope that you can look back, Lord, it happened to me. I am, I am like this now, but I'm thankful that the first 40 years of my life, I have served you. There's no regret. I did my best for you. I did not waste my life on something else. Rather than, parabang nagregret tayo na, why did I waste my time in the first 40 years? The prime of my life. Why did I spend in these things? In these things, now I want to serve the Lord, but I don't have anymore the strength, the vigor. I lost my health already, and I cannot do much for the Lord. That is why to serve the Lord 
to sacrifice for the Lord, to do His will today is the most important thing. And you cannot really say that I will do this tomorrow because you don't have the, you know, the, the certainty that you'll be there tomorrow. That's my prayer. Na sana Lord, kung kunin niyo ako, if I look back, wala kong regret that I failed to do your will in my life. He nearly died. Epaphroditus nearly died because he was committed for the work of Christ. And Paul and Epaphroditus pareha din ang heartbeat. Look at verse 25. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, Adelphos. We are brothers. The next, my fellow worker in our King James, my companion in labor. The word companion in labor is very interesting because it comes from the word son and ergos. Son ergos. Where we get our English word synergy. Epaphroditus and Paul, they were a team. They worked together. They synergized. Team. He is a team player. He has a kingdom view. I'm not here for my own agenda, but I'm here because we have the same goal. To serve God, to uplift and exalt the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm here to supplement and to help Paul for the work of the ministry. Are we a team player? You cannot, you cannot serve God if you have a hidden agenda that I want my name to be first. I want my name to be there. I want my name to be above anybody else. A team player is always one thing that he can be of help to somebody, even he will sacrifice himself for that. He was also a fellow soldier. It's very interesting because the word fellow soldier does not mean that, does not mean that, uh, that uh, Epaphroditus really was, uh, you know, physically fighting for uh, like an army like that. But they have the same struggles. They are fighting together. They, they have the same struggles and Hindi nagsusurrender, kundi patuloy for the cause of the gospel. And he changed here, in the later portion of the verse, na, inyong messenger, the word messenger is sent out. The word missionary comes from this word. He, the, he was your missionary to go to me in order to minister to my need. You want to support me? You need somebody to go and risk his life. How many miles? How many thousand miles is Philippi to Rome? Several thousand of miles. It took him several days, maybe weeks, even months maybe, to go to Rome. Amidst the danger and the risk of the travel, he didn't care whether he was going to die or survive there, as long as he will be able to support the work of the ministry. He was willing to sacrifice his life. He was very selfless here. What a good example for us to follow. Is, you know, na nagtataka lang ako na may mga advocates, mga nature advocates, may mga sports advocates, that they will risk their lives, that they will climb a tall, I mean, a high mountain, you know, cliff like that. Pag mahulog, mamatay, right? They will walk on tight wires from one end to the other cliff, Pag mahulog, mamatay din. There was this National Geographic photographer who spent days in the Amazon River in Brazil just to observe a small bird, a rare bird. And he has, he has, to, he has to wade into the water and be still and the crocodiles are passing his nose. Just be still, that, just to get that perfect picture of this bird. I'm just wondering why they risk their life for that. But one of the reasons maybe is because of their passion. They're willing to die for this cause. But as Christians, sa ating mga Kristiyano, we have a better cause to sacrifice our lives. Is there any other better cause other than to give our lives for the Lord? I hope that Kung sa kasabihan pa, if the Lord will take us, we will find us on our boots on. 
kunin tayo while our, we are on our boots on. Sana ko mag-rapture, nagkikita tayo na nag-rapture nga nang doon tayo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Nang doon tayo sa kalooban ng Panginoon. I remember a pastor friend in Cebu. He backslided. He worked in a club. He got, I mean, he has all the money he has because maraming tips sa mga customer, no? But he worked in a club. He was called a pastor. Every time he rode the taxi from the club back to his rented place in Cebu City, magpipray siya, Lord, sana hindi mag-rapture. Sana hindi pa mag-rapture, Lord. Baka hindi ako makalabas sa bubungan ng kotse, ng, 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 ng taxi. He was so guilty because he knew that he was not in the will of God until he realized, I cannot stay here, and now he is pastoring. You see, ang aking dalangin sa ating, ating, ating um, puso, sa atin bilang mga Kristiyano is that when the time that God will take us, I hope that we will be there in the center of God's will, doing His will. Risking our lives for the Lord. Because true servants don't seek to be convenient and comfortable, but they seek to be committed to do the will of God. Just like Epaphroditus and Timothy. He has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard, you heard that he was ill. You see, si Timothy, uh, si Epaphroditus was distressed. He was full of heaviness according to our King James Version. Bakit na-distress siya? Bakit he was full of heaviness? Because he was sick? No. Na-distress siya when the church at Philippi knew that he was ill. In other words, he does not want anybody to, to worry about his life. He didn't want anybody to, to be so concerned over his life. Because he was so selfless. It rebuked me because sometimes when we have some you know, discomfort and inconvenience in life. Sometimes we think that nobody knows what I'm doing. Nobody cares really what I'm doing, what happened to me. We become so selfish and self-centered. I'm doing this, I'm suffering, and nobody cares. No even, wala nag-text sa akin, wala nga nag-email sa akin, wala nga nag-visita sa akin. But Epaphroditus was different. He does not want anybody to bother his situation because he was so committed not to be a burden to others. I thank the Lord that there are people, there are Christians who are like this. They don't want to be a burden. Sa to say sa ating panahon ngayon, Christianity has lowered its standard that most who so-called professing Christians, they want to go to church where they can, wa- they can find what they want. What is convenient? What's for me mentality? Anong nga kukuha ko dyan? What's it's for me for me in, in mentality? I hope we can change this mindset that it's not about what we can get, but what we can give for the Lord. Because and after all, ang dami na nating biyaya na, na, na receive sa Panginoon. God has given us so much. God has given us this, His salvation that should be enough for us to say, Lord, what can I give back to you? What can I give back to your, to your salvation na binigay niyo sa akin? Let's remove this what's, it, what's for me in mentality because it's part of the world. Verse 27 and 28, Paul expressed the same concern because they have the same heartbeat. Yes, he was sick nigh unto death and I was so concerned lest kung ano mangyari sa kanya, I have sorrow upon sorrow. I will send him therefore unto you presently that when you see him again, you will rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. And he challenged the church at Philippi. Tung uring mga tao na to, remember them, receive them with gladness. Receive them with gladness in verse 29. Uh, receive them with gladness in the Lord and hold them in such reputation. Hold them in such reputation. Honor them. Mahalaga sila sa ating gitna. Don't forget to honor such men. Let it be that we will always, you know, uh, take, take um, uh, this, this uh, examples from, from this two, two person, Timothy and the proper writers, as a challenge for us. Can we be counted on 
in the service of God? Can we be counted on that we are having this heartbeat and we have this commitment and we are willing really to give our lives for the Lord? We parents, if your children are called for full-time ministry, are you willing to sacrifice your children for the Lord? Oh, pastor, ang anak ko, dapat mag-engineer, dapat mag-lawyer, dapat mag-ganito, dapat mag-doktor, dapat ganito. Sometimes, one of my pastor friends complained, why is it that the, we have some problematic pastors in our churches? And he said, it's because sometimes we don't give the best to the Lord. Ikaw anak, magaling ka sa matha, mag-engineer ka. Ikaw anak, magaling ka sa English, dapat mag-lawyer ka. Pero ikaw anak, vocational ka lang ang ano mo. Eh, magpastor ka na lang anak. Sometimes we have this option that God does not deserve the best. But to us today, if you are convinced that God deserves the best, I hope that you will really do the best for God. Let us pray.